Hello snowboarders of the internet, I am your host TC and today we will be reviewing the K2 Broadcast. This board is equipped with K2's directional combination camber profile and pretty much that means you have camber right underneath your feet, right to the inserts and then rocker from the tip to the tail. So you do have a longer rocker zone in the nose than you do the tail just because it is a directional board and you do have more nose than tail. That camber profile is gonna make it so you do have all of that power and drive right underneath your feet, but that rocker on the tip and tail is gonna help with float and ease of getting in and out of turns. This board comes in 153, 156, 158 wide, 159, 162, and 163 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain where it was a sunny bluebird day, nice and brisk outside where the groomers were were freshly groomed and it turned to ice later in the day and a little chunky and chundery towards the afternoon. I used my Ride Fuse boots and Jones Mercury bindings. I would say the flex of this board is definitely in the middle of the road where even on those rocker zones on the tip and the tail, I didn't really feel it get super soft or anything like that. It felt nice and smooth throughout the board. When it came to stability, the board was very good at those moderate and slower speeds but once you got it to higher speeds, it didn't hold an edge quite as well. Although it was damp, so I didn't really feel all of that chunder and icy conditions towards the end of the day, I did feel it didn't hold the edge when it came to like those giant high speed carves. When it comes to ollieing this board, it does feel like a traditional camber board where you're not feeling that soft rocker section in the tail quite as much, where you do get a nice return on that snap. And with all that energy you're putting in, you're getting back. This board definitely feels different when you're buttering on the nose as opposed to the tail where on the nose you have a giant rocker zone so it's easier to press into it. You have a little bit more leverage to really get it on edge there and hold it. Where on the tail you have that, that shorter zone probably right about here to right about here where when you go to flex on it you don't have as much room to play with so it has to be a little bit more precise. Now, they both will still snap you out of your butter, so you don't have to worry about really flexing out of it or anything like that, but it is gonna feel a little bit different buttering on the nose and the tail. As I mentioned before, this board doesn't carve best at high speeds. It definitely excels more at those moderate to slower speeds, that rad dad speed, as I like to say, where it is good on those short carves, since it is directional, has taper, you are gonna be able to get it edge to edge nice and quick. Those medium sized carves, it's nice and smooth. And those long drawn out carves are all right as long as you're not going too fast on it where you're starting to feel that chatter. Now when you get to the Euro carves, it does Euro carve at those slower speeds. But like I said before, there is a speed limit. You might over flex that board on a fast Euro carve and just pop right out. The rider in mind for this board is honestly, I think it's that rad dad, that person that's gonna go out there with their kids and just ride the mountain and then when they're like all right it's lunchtime you guys go hang out with mom go hang out with whoever i'm gonna go rip the mountain by myself that's who this board is for they can take it wherever they want they're not going to be pushing their limits because they got a family to feed at home so they don't want to get hurt or anything like that and they're just going out there to have a good time they just need one board to do everything and just pretty much cruise the mountain Personally, I liked the board. I thought like when I was riding it, I was like, all right, it's okay. It's not the greatest thing out there. But once I like pretty much stopped and wrote it how it was meant to be ridden, it became a lot more fun where I was like, you know what? I can slow down. I can just sit here, take turns, cruise. I did notice that it was kind of weird landing switch on it where I really did not want to ride switch on this board. So just popped right back to regular and just called it a day and was like, all right, that's it. We're just gonna ride regular and we're just gonna hit some nice cruisy groomers. Comparable boards, the Solomon Super 8 and the GNU Anti-Gravity C3. Recommended bindings, K2 Bond, Ride C6, and Jones Orion. I've been your host TC and this has been my review of the K2 broadcast. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave a comment down below. I want to know what you guys have to say. Remember, if you're new here, subscribe, click that bell, turn on those notifications. If you want to support us further, head on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. Sure, I could explain it here, but we have a great video over there getting into it really in depth. And as always, guys, I've been your host TC. I'll see you out on the mountain.